Hello everyone, welcome again. So today's lesson will be on the industrial chemistry option and this series will be on surfactants and synthetic detergents. So in the previous series we sort of talked about saponification and soaps uh, and how soap works. Um, so in this set of, of um, lessons we'll be talking about surfactants and synthetic detergents and how they sort of relate to soaps and cleaning and things of that nature. Okay. So the first thing we need to talk about is emulsions, okay? So an emulsion is just uh, a mixture of different... Oh, actually, it's better if we just go to what is an emulsion. So an emulsion is a type of mixture. So it essentially has no set composition, as all mixtures. And it consists of the dispersion of small droplets of one liquid in another liquid, okay? So when we talk about mixtures, we tend to think of it as two liquids that can sort of, or two things that mix together that don't dissolve in one another. Um, that's just any mixture. But an emulsion is two liquids that don't mix, where you have small droplets, uh, which would be the, these pink particles, in, a, uh, in another liquid. Okay? So a common one is oil and water. If you can somehow get them to the, the oil to become droplets, then it's an emulsion of oil and water. It's not the same as a solution because the droplets are not dissolved, okay? So we just gotta keep that clear in our minds that an emulsion is not a solution, even though they're two liquids um, sort of contained in one another, because the droplets don't dissolve in the water or in the, the other solution, in the other, sorry, in the other liquid. So an emulsifier is something that encourages emulsions to, uh, to be produced. So soap is a surfactant, we know that. Soap reduces the surface tension of water and it allows an emulsion to form between oil and water. Okay, so it allows emulsions to form between oil and water. So that means it's an emulsifier as well. Okay, so it's not only a surfactant, it's also an emulsifier. So if we look on the, in the picture here, on the left hand side we see oil and water and you can see that the oil is sitting on top of the water. Okay, the left hand side. And this right hand side is when we have um, soap and you can see that the oil is now evenly distributed throughout the water because the soap has allowed the water has allowed the soap has broken down the, the oil into small droplets to allow it to be distributed through the water. So soap also stabilizes the emulsion and prevents the two liquids from separating. Okay, so if you imagine um, for instance, salad dressing. It's mostly oil and some other things. If you shake it, you can get it to homogenize. You can get it to mix correctly. Um, and then you put it on your salad or whatever. Um, if you let it stand, what happens is the oil tends to, to rise back to the top and then you get a separation of, of oil on the top and water and other things on the bottom. Now what soap does um, is it helps to stabilize that emulsion. So when, so after you've gotten that nice you know, mixture, that nice homogeneous mixture, the, the soap actually allows it to stay that way, stay um, mixed rather than separate. Um, and we'll explain why shortly. But that's what soap does. Um, that's not advocating adding soap to your salad dressing, but that's just, that's just an example of how it works, okay? So the soap allows oil and water to mix by forming hydrogen bonds with the water and dispersion forces with the oil. Okay, so here's our soap molecule, these little almost tadpole looking guys. And this green chain or green tail is hydrocarbon and that, allow, that dissolves in the oil. Now this blue circle is the, is the head of the, the soap and it's negatively charged. So it attracts water molecules because water molecules are polar. Now the anionic heads of the soap repel each other and prevent the oil from merging back together. And that's why it doesn't form, uh, that's why the, the, the soap helps to fall, keep that emulsion stable. Is because if you see these two droplets, if they try to come together, these negatively charged heads will actually repel each other. So, they, so those two oil droplets can't actually get close enough together to merge again because these negatively charged heads are actually just pushing them apart. So that's why the soap acts as a stabilizer for this emulsion. So other emulsions that we see around um, in the around the world, homogenized milk, 
So when they say milk is homogenized, what it means is they've just mixed the milk such that it's a mixture of milk, fat, water, and milk proteins. So they've just stirred the, or they've somehow got the milk to stabilize as milk, fat, milk proteins, and water. Okay, so that's a common mixture that we see all the time, common emulsion. Butter and cheese are emulsions of oil and water, and um, not oil and water sometimes. Okay. Mayonnaise is just an emulsion of salad oil in vinegar with egg yolk acting as the emulsifier. So um, it's just a mixture of, of salad oil. Cosmetic and pharmaceutical creams are emulsions stabilized by synthetic emulsifiers. So they use some kind of uh, petrochemical to help emulsify all these different chemicals that go in your creams and various other pharmaceuticals. Um, and that just keeps it all together rather than separating. And I'm sure I've seen um, if sunscreen's been left for too long, it does tend to separate um, once it's gone you know, years past its due date. So you can see these things happen once the emulsifiers start degrading. So unstable emulsions. So an unstable emulsion will eventually separate back into its components. So that oil and water situation, you'll have oil on the, bottom, uh, oil on the top and water at the bottom eventually. Okay? And that's what we call an unstable emulsion, because it'll eventually just separate that way. Products labeled shake well usually contain substances that form an unstable emulsion. So salad dressing is one of them sometimes. You have to shake it in order to get it to mix properly. Shaking the container causes them to form an emulsion for a short time, and then usually at that time you'd eat it or something, and so it won't matter anyway. Once you've eaten it, you know, it's gone. Okay. So that's the preliminary work on emulsions that we need to cover before we look at soaps, uh, detergents, and synthetic surfactants. So we've learned about what an emulsion is and some common emulsions that we see every day. So we'll move on to the question segment and see if we can answer some questions on it. So which of the following is an example of an emulsion? Okay, so molten NaCl is a single substance, not a mixture. So that means obviously it's not an emulsion, simply because it's, it's just one chemical. An emulsion is a mixture of two chemicals at least. Oil floating on top of water. In this instance, because the two are one sitting on top, it's not an emulsion because it's not forming little droplets. So it's not an emulsion. Water saturated with sugar. This is a solution because the sugar is dissolved in the water. So the sugar is actually part of the, with, contained within the water structure. Whereas an emulsion is just, it still sits um, outside of the solution. And homogenized milk. This is an emulsion because it contains droplet of one liquid, which is the milk fats, distributed through, the, through another liquid, which is the water in this case. So that's our answer. Which of the following best describes a surfactant? Well, a surfactant changes a substance's surface tension. Okay? So surfactant, surf, surface. Um, so it just sort of interacts with the surface tension of a substance, and that's all a surfactant does. So it's a, sur it's a surfactant changes a substance's surface tension, and that's all it does. Is homogeneous milk a stable emulsion or an unstable emulsion? Explain your answer, okay? Milk is a stable emulsion, okay? Even after a long time, it won't separate into two different layers like an unstable emulsion. So if I poured a cup of milk for myself, left it on the kitchen bench for an hour or two, it would still be drinkable, hopefully, if it hasn't gone bad. Let's say it's a cool day. It will still be drinkable once I get back, and it won't separate into different layers. The hom homogenization process produces this stable emulsion, and however, usually, fat in water is an unstable emulsion. So through this homogenization process, we get a stable emulsion from something that would otherwise give us an unstable emulsion. So why can't water form an emulsion with oil without detergent present? Well, the droplets of oil combine with each other to form larger droplets because they attract each other with dispersion forces. Okay, so remember, if you, have, if you just took oil and water and you tried to mix it really, really vigorously, you get really small droplets. But those droplets would start to attract one another and form bigger droplets. 
The water does not attract oil with dispersion forces because water is polar, okay? So any emulsion of oil in pure water will be unstable. So if we mix it, no matter how hard we mix it, it's not going to stay that way forever because the oil and water don't attract one another because they have unlike bonding structures. Okay. So use a diagram to show how soap, water, and grease form an emulsion with the soap acting as an emulsifier. So this is all we need, really. If this is the oil droplet and the rest is water, you can see that the soap negative heads actually repel one another, so they keep the oil droplets away from each other, which makes, which allows them to remain small, and so they don't end up, you know, reforming these big droplets and sitting on top of the water anymore. Okay. So that concludes today's lesson on emulsions. So we're going to continue this and branch out this study into surfactants and detergents. So I look forward to seeing you at our next lesson. Mm -hmm.